welcome back to Hoop Shooting the Breeze, our show all about the hoop shoot. On this show, we interview past participants, volunteers, and other friends of the Hoop Shoot program. I'm McKenna Cannon, and joining me today is Mike Peterzak, Director of Partnerships at the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Welcome, Mike. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's so great to have you here. Um, and as our viewers may know, we have a partnership with the Hall of Fame we have um, for many years. Um, but why don't you just start things off by um, telling us a little bit about the Hall? Sure. So we are a 501c3 nonprofit um, museum here in Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, we're located in Springfield um, because that's where the game of basketball was founded by, uh, by Dr. James Naismith, who the Hall of Fame is named after. Um, and and we, we really have um, a unique um, a unique perspective when it comes to Hall of Fames. We represent the entire game of basketball, not just professionally. So everything from youth, grassroots, all the way up through the NBA, Olympics, um, and everything like that. So it does really provide that unique perspective that um, some other Hall of Fames may not do. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, we, we, we run um, a lot of events throughout the year, including um, participating with, obviously, with the Elks National Championships. Um, and, uh, and we're really trying to expand, and, uh, and I think we've done a great job so far. Yeah, that's awesome. That it's, it's so cool to um, you know, hear that it's not just about professional basketball, but basketball yep. at all levels, obviously, since that <laughs> fits with our mission so well um, <laughs> with, the, with the hoop shoots. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, and as I, you know, a lot of our viewers know, as you know, this season um, marks the 50th anniversary of the Hoop Shooters National Program, which is so exciting. We're, we're just thrilled um, to be back in action. Um, and our partnership with the Hall of Fame goes back to 1975, three years after the inception of our program. Um, and some viewers will maybe recall that um, the first Hoop Shoot National Finals that were held in Springfield were in conjunction with Basketball Centennial in 1991. And then we went back to Springfield in 1995 for a 20 year run, um, hosting the finals there and going to um, the Hall of Fame. Um, so what does the, the partnership um, with the Elks really mean, mean to the Hall? Yeah, it's really important. And like I said, um, just a couple minutes ago, I'll touch on it again. The Basketball mm -hmm. Hall of Fame here in Springfield, we represent every aspect of the game of basketball, every level um, of the game of basketball. And, and that's where the grassroots and youth component really comes into play with our partnership with the Elks, because it's not just, you know, it, it's not just people in the NBA that, that um, you know, that, that represent the game. And that's really our goal and our mission is, is to keep um, educating people on that and, and, really, um, and really recognizing everybody that has contributed to the game of basketball along the way. And, and like I said, that grassroots effort that um, the, the youth basketball, the leagues and all the, all the great work that you folks do, um, it's such a crucial component of the growth of, uh, of basketball over the last several decades. And, um, and, and I think that's why this partnership between the Elks and the Hall of Fame is so important because it does give us a chance to tell that story. It does give us a chance to really let the world know that um, that, that we represent every level of basketball. And, um, and we could not be more thrilled to do that. We could not be more thrilled to participate um, with, with things that you do and get involved with the youth. So, um, so I, I think that's why this partnership is so important to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you touched on it a little bit, but I think it's so great that our program is also such a grassroots movement and it's being celebrated yep. in um, the Basketball Hall of Fame, you know, the highest um <laughs> yep. memorial place for yep. basketball in the country um absolutely it's, it's really impressive and i think it says a lot about not only our um participants but also our our contributors our volunteers that make the program happen so um mm -hmm. it's it's really great to, to hear that um and so again as probably most people watching this know um our six national champions each year are added to display in the Hall of Fame um, with their picture, their name, their sponsoring lodge. Um, and the museum recently underwent a multi-year renovation. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the new display? Yeah, sure. And again, um, you know, one of the things that we do um, that we do differentiate ourselves, we, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. So like you said, we just did finish a a, uh, a, a very successful capital campaign and fundraising campaign here. Um, we, we were able to raise a lot of money 
um, ourselves. And that went back into the museum, that went back into trying to um, work towards achieving our mission um, here at the Hall of Fame. And, and one, of those, uh, one of those components included really giving people a much better experience when they come to the Basketball Hall of Fame. Um, you know, it was a fantastic building prior to this renovation. We had a lot of history, a lot of artifacts, and, and we still do. Um, but we really have made the effort to jump, um, I say, into the 21st century a little <laughs> bit um, and, and, and become one of, if, if not the most technologically advanced um, sports hall of fames in the world. And, and we've mm -hmm. done that, we've gone out and done that, and we've raised um, every single penny of, the, uh, of that to, to accomplish that. And, and one, of the, one of the massive parts of our renovation was um, changing the way we represent the, uh, the Elks winners. And, um, and just to give the folks listening a little bit of a background, we used to have a, a static standalone plaque that um, we would just update it with new names of the winners each year. And we had that um, hanging up in the Hall of Fame. And that experience has completely transformed um, into a much more um, digital uh, interactive experience, which um, I know that the folks over at the Elks have seen. And, and um, it, it's such an enhanced experience where um, we have an entire kiosk now that's dedicated to the Elks, to all the champions throughout the years. And instead of just seeing their names on a plaque, uh, we've gone a little bit above and beyond where we've worked with you and your entire team. And we've gathered photos, gathered videos, gathered information. And it's actually a touch, a, a touch screen experience where you can go and search throughout the years by last name. And you can find Elks winners throughout um, the past several decades. And mm -hmm. Um, you can click on them, you can learn about them, you can learn who they are, where they come from. Uh, we have, like I said, we have photos, quotes, videos um, included in it. So like I said before, um, just with the rest of the museum, this Elks experience um, has just been completely enhanced. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's incredible. And I, I haven't seen it in person yet, but I've yeah. you know, seen the pictures and the videos of it and it's so sharp and it's just such yeah. a cool representation of every aspect of the program you know Absolutely. everything that we've collected over the decades you now have and everyone can see which yep. is really really and, impressive <laughs> yeah and that's and that's you know and that was really our main goal of this renovation is is really is really implementing um a relatable and interactive storytelling component um in, in as many ways as possible and i think we've accomplished that with the uh with the new elks hoop shoot exhibit um and, and I think that the people that have seen it that are previous Elks winners, the people that are involved mm -hmm. with the Elks, um, I, I, I walk by it every single day in the museum <laughs> and, uh, and, and people love it. So I, I really hope that, uh, that the families that, that have come to see it, I, I hope they appreciate it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it's only been up since, you know, for a couple months, I think, or, you know, yeah. year maybe now. Yep. Um, so we've had a couple of families visit that were the 2020 champions um, and they were just so impressed and it was great to hear Good. that. They loved that's it um, as much as we yep. do. So, yeah, that's the, that's the real important part. Um, touching a little bit more on our, our champions, um, our yep. two top scorers each year, um, we call them, the, they're the Getty Powell Award winners. Um, the top boy and top girl are invited to the Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame Enshrinement Ceremony. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that event and um, the Getty Powell winners involvement? Yep. Yeah, and, and again, that's that's another really cool um, aspect of our partnership that we absolutely love. And um, j just to give the, the, the crowd a little bit of a background, like you said, so um, they, they're invited to come up to the enshrinement weekend, our, our annual enshrinement weekend. It's, it's not only the biggest event that we have, but it is the biggest event in, in basketball in the entire world. And that's the, when the, the, new, uh, the new Hall of Fame class gets inducted into the Hall of Fame. So we host the, uh, the Getty Powell winners that weekend. We put them up in a hotel and we give them tickets to the, uh, to the enshrinement ceremony. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think the, the coolest part for me is, is again, back to that grassroots effort um, in, in basketball and in representing that that lane um, here at the Hall of Fame, because the way I look at it is they get to come in with their families, they get to mm -hmm. see the new class get enshrined, but then they also get to see the, 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 the museum and the new exhibit, and they can actually see their names um, in the Basketball Hall of Fame next to the Michael Jordan, the Larry Bird, the Magic Johnson, and, and it's just, it, it's, it's not only cool for them and cool for their families, but again, mm -hmm. it just depicts an accurate picture yeah. of why, of why us here at the Hall of Fame fame why we love what we do so much because we get to represent the entire game of basketball and we get to um, have those moments where they they see themselves in the same light as people like a Michael Jordan. 
Yeah. It's, it's really awesome. And I mean, yeah. we get the pictures each year from, from the kids and from the families that go <laughs> and their smiles are just as big as possible. Yeah. And they're just so thrilled um, to yeah. be there and, you know, for their accomplishments to be recognized at the same level. Um, I think it's just something that's unparalleled from what I've heard of in youth sports too. So it's, it's really just such a cool experience. For absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the, you know, the past of our partnership and, you know, kind yep. of where we come from, but where do you see the Hall of Fame and the Hoop Shoot partnership um, in another 50 years? I mean, I, I look at this as, as a really unique partnership. We have a lot of, um, you know, we have a lot of great partners here at the Hall of Fame that I've worked with for um, the 10 years since I've been here at the Hall of Fame. And, and the Elks, like I said, it's such a unique partnership um, because of, of how it differentiates itself because it's not a, it's not a corporate partnership. It's, 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 it's really that youth level involvement and, mm -hmm. and basketball is the, the fastest growing game on the planet. And, and we like to say, I mean, it's, it's, it's the easiest game to play. I mean, you, you need a ball and you need, and you need a hoop. You can just go to the local, you can go to the local park. You can go in your driveway. You don't need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on equipment. You don't need any of that. It, it's really simple. And that's why basketball continues to grow and grow and grow each day. And, and I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. And, and with that being said, that just means that that youth, that youth level, um, it, it's just not going away. And, and that's great for, that's great for you with what you do at the hoop shoot. And that's great for us, what we try to re represent here at the hall of fame. So, um, we've accomplished a lot and, and I hope that we're representing the, the youth level of basketball, um, as, as good as we can be as of right now. Um, but I, I just see this partnership continuing to grow and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I know that we, um, knock on wood, we'll, we'll hopefully be back in attendance, uh, for the next, um, national championship yep. and I, I, I I'm planning on being there myself so hopefully <laughs> nothing goes wrong between now and then um but getting getting back to that being on site taking part in that moment um it, it's just really important for us and, and I and I continue uh, I, I I see us continuing um to grow and grow and grow over the years so hopefully uh all that comes to fruition yeah awesome and we we are you know full steam ahead in our plans for for yep. next year's um national finals um in awesome. Chicago and we can't wait to have everyone back um and I think it'll be really really great to to be back in person um competing yep. so we're looking absolutely forward to that's, that's gonna be that's going that's gonna be great for the kids most importantly yes most and importantly. I can and, and I can tell you that um so I have a uh, I have a I have a two-year-old daughter and um and and she she tells me every single weekend, she always asks me to come to the Hall of Fame so she can, so she can run around the court, so she can, she, she can shoot on the little hoop. So when, when, I, when I talk about the growth of the game, and, and yeah. it's, just one of those, it's just one of those sports that no matter when you're born, no matter what decade you're born into, it just seems mm -hmm. like that's the, the sport of basketball is just going to continue to grow. And, and um, it's just so enjoyable and so likable for everybody. So, so like I said, I, I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. Absolutely. And something that you know, we really pride ourselves on as a, as a basketball youth program is, um, you know, for the hoop shoot, it's a free throw contest. So you don't yep. have to be the tallest. You don't have to be the fastest. Exactly. Um, you just have to be really dedicated to getting better and better in yourself and being gritty. Um, so I think that that's, you know, it's so great because there's so many aspects of basketball that kids, you know, can be a part of, which is, yep. which is really cool. So um, yep. as we're closing up here, um, do you have any words of wisdom for hoop shooters uh, hoping one day to see their names in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I mean, the, the, uh, you know, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because <laughs> we actually have we actually have direct evidence of that yeah. um, with, with, with Chris Mullen mm -hmm. um, being a hoop shoot champion. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll have to fact mm -hmm. check this. I think it was 1974. 19, yes, 1974. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's, it's one of those questions that that we get all the time that you know, when it comes to professional sports, when it comes to being famous, a celebrity or anything like that, you know, it, it's always nice to say, you know, just, you know, work hard and try hard. But, but this time we actually have proof that <laughs> someone that came from your, um, your, your organization, your competition has actually mm -hmm. made it to the hall of fame. Yeah. And I think, and I think that, that, that says a lot. I think it says mm -hmm. a lot about, um, it says a lot about what you need to do. And I think, and I think first and foremost, I think you need to love the game of basketball. And, and this is a great step in introducing, like you said, you don't have to be the biggest, you don't have to be the tallest to compete 
in this particular competition. So right. I think right off the bat, it gives everybody kind of that inclusive feeling where they are on the same mm -hmm. playing field as everybody else. And I think right off the bat, that lets them enjoy the game of basketball more than if you just threw them on a court and said, you know, good luck, um, you know, playing five on five or whatever. Absolutely. And um, right. <laughs> it, so, so, so I think, I think just, just finding that love for the game of basketball, enjoying every second you step on the court. And then if you ask, especially Chris Mullen, but if you ask any mm -hmm. NBA player, any hall of famer, it's all mm -hmm. about putting in that work. It's all about the consistency. It's all about doing things you know, going that extra mile when you're tired, putting in the extra hour of work when you want to go home and you want to eat some fast food or play <laughs> video games or, or whatever it may be. And, and in the sport of basketball, it's all about consistency. It's all about doing your absolute best to get better every single day, showing that character, um, you know, in doing the right things, maybe not necessarily, you know, on the court during games, but doing the right things when no one's looking, are you working, you know, are you putting the extra dribbling drills or shooting drills or everything like that? And I think that's, that's the stuff that differentiates people. And that's the stuff that you can start at such a young age and instilling the mindset of not only basketball, but really anything you do in life that it's all, it's all about doing the right thing when no one's watching. And that really builds that character. And if you build that character, you're going to be successful no matter what. And in Chris Mullen's case, you're going to end, mm -hmm. end up in the hall of fame. So um, that, that, that's really what I would say. And that, that's, that's, that's um, one of the things that I wanted to really hit on is I'm big into, yeah. um, you know, building up that character. And I know your organization does such a great job um, in instilling kind of that mindset and a lot of the kids that come through. So, um, mm -hmm. so that, that, that's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. And I, I think that really is exactly the, the mission that we have for our kids yep. is to, you know, push yourselves, put in the work. Um, and, it, and it's possible, you know, we have, we have evidence of it. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, Absolutely. And, 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 you know, even if they're not there as the professional sports player, the, you know, coach, the, a member yep. of the dream team, um, they can be there um, as a Elks National Hoop Shoot champion, which is also, so, you know, it, it just Absolutely. was the, the, you know, outcome of really hard work. So I think that that's, that's awesome. Yep. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining me today, Mike. It's been of a pleasure. Of course, my pleasure. <laughs> um, and my, we'll be my back pleasure. next month here um, for another exciting interview. Um, but before we go, um, the November service scorecard begins right now. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's a virtual engagement opportunity um, that combines service, elk spirit of volunteerism, and fun. Um, and participants have a chance to win a $100 donation to the charity of their choice, along with some really cool hoop shoot swag. Um, so Mike, could you share this month's theme, please? Sure. So the theme for November is thankfulness, um, focused on service that shows gratitude for family, friends, and uh, um, community. So if you, everyone that's watching, um, <laughs> go and visit uh, enf.elks.org slash service SC. Uh, if I didn't pronounce that properly, I'll say it again. It's enf.elks.org slash service SC. Um, and there you can go visit the website and that's how you can participate. Awesome. Yep. That was perfect. So thanks again, Mike. Um, yep. And yeah, we'll be back um, to announce the winners of the November scorecard next month. Um, in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like the show, leave us a thumbs up. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Um, until next time, best swishes. Have a good one. This is a special announcement for the October Service Scorecard winner. Huge congratulations to Kaysen Lyons from Mount Vernon, Washington. Congrats, Kaysen. You've won a $100 donation to the charity of your choice. And to all of our October service scorecard off the court participants, thank you for getting out there and serving your communities this month. It was such a pleasure to see all of your submissions. Um, we hope to see you all again next month and we hope to have even more participants. Again, the service scorecard is for everybody. Um, thank you and best wishes.